Bwana Yesu asifiwe. I'm Dokas Joking Gogi and I'm born again. I love the Lord because he has been so wonderful and he has been great in my life. Now, thank you so much for each and every one of you who have availed yourself for this harvest conference and yeah, we have been I'm telling you your life will never be the same again. Now, on today we are going to talk uh we are going to talk about a bit of uh healing the inner man, our healing our inner man. And I have learned we will look at several lessons that we can learn from the story of Samson. We understand that Samson was a, a Levite and he was chosen from birth. Actually, his his birth was, was prophesied. And we understand that that he grew to live up to what he was set apart to do. But in the midst of all that, he was at some point he diverted from the way or Still, when he went still on the way, he diverted and he did things that you were not supposed to do. Sometimes life may throw you around and you find yourself lost with all the kinds of hearts, pain, agony, disappointment and everything else. You just sit and wonder what your life what her, your life has turned to or you just sit uh, and you no longer feel as if God can do things because maybe you have been lost in so much pain you have been lost in so much disappointment you the people you expected to help ne have never turned out to be to to step up for you or maybe you had you have put your lap on the lion's lap for too long to an extent by the moment you realize you have been brought to captivity to captivity any to slavery slavery of bitterness to slavery of the addiction slavery of hopelessness slavery of prayerlessness negativity and all you can see you can't just see anything good before your life one thing that I know is I have good news for you because it doesn't matter how much or how deep you have gone into it. The truth is that God is ready to receive you again and so that we can turn and we can we can be able to return back to the to the first love to as as our our theme verse for this harvest conference is Jeremiah chapter 2 verse 2 which says that I remember how eager you were to praise me as a young bride long ago how you loved me and followed me even through the barren wilderness it is very possible for you to go back to God come back to God and he will receive you as we know that as 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 the bible talks about the story of the prodigal son that despite him being being given whatever he was supposed to get and he goes out there and he misuses it but the father was ready and eager to always receive him that he was always on the door he was always looking at the gate to see when will he come back now as we uh, uh, there's, there's a verse that I would want to read in the book in the book of J judges chapter 16 chapter 16 verse chapter 16 verse 19 and it says that Delilah lured Samson to sleep with with his head on her lap and then she called in a man to shave off the seven locks of his hair in this way she began to bring him down and his strength left him. At this point is where Delilah had uh, had uh, had nagged Samson for a very long time. He had nagged him severally. Because if you read the, the book of Judges chapter 16, you will see that Samson had three chances to not and to just let go. It is the same way with God. God gives us so many chances, so many chances in our lives that we, where we get, he tells us, like, he gives us warning. Because I, I, I seem, I, I fail to understand that in the story of Samson, you find the first time he did that, actually, the Bible says that the Philistine came and they were there. And of course, he came and he just, like, destroyed them like a flash. And then the same thing happened again and again and again. But he was so blinded by earthly things. He was so blinded by whatever they had with Delilah. They was, he was so blinded. Or maybe he had walked in that path for so long. To an extent he could not even be alert to know when it's time to run. When it is time to just 
drop it and just move on. In life, our God is a merciful God. He's a gracious God that he will give. He always gives us chances. Now, in the in the in the in the last in the in the in the last chance that God, after the, the, the last time Samson was told, uh, was asked by Delilah, and he gave Delilah ad, an explanation, and Delilah ac uh, actually did it, and he, she called the Philistine, and they came, and Kama Kawaida, so Samson was able to overcome them. Now, the last thing, I want us to read that verse, verse 20. After now, here Samson has already given Delilah his secrets. The secrets of his power, the secrets of uh, of his everything that he has been doing, the secret of God using him in a mighty way. In verse 20, it says, Then she cried out, Samson, the Philistines have come to capture you. When he woke up, he thought, I will do as before and shake myself free. You know, there's a challenge when it comes to sin. There's a challenge when it comes to bitterness. When it, there's a challenge when it comes to hopelessness. Because sometimes you, or oh, sin tells you that you are able. Because you did it once, or you did it once and you are able to overcome and return. He, you always think that it is, it will always be easy. But the truth is, the truth of the matter is this, that at some point it will reach and you won't be able. Like some, like Samson here thought that he will just do as before and shake his, him, he, himself off and rub, and, uh, rub his, uh, like for example, if you, for those who are young and used to take sugar from the sugar pot or the sugar dish, you would take it and then wipe your, your lips so that no one would know. The same way when it comes to this life. You do things. You do it once, you wipe it. You do it again, you wipe it. By the, by, at the count of it or after everything has been said and done, you will find yourself so deep into it to an extent, to, a, to an extent you find now Samson is in captivity. Samson is a slave. Then he's being called a man who used to do exploits in the kingdom of God, a man who was set apart for God, a man who was, uh, his life was consecrated to serve God for the rest of his life. Now he's in slavery. But one thing that amazed me, because there are things that you can do that will help you, it doesn't matter how deep you are into that level. It doesn't matter how deep you are into that uh, addiction. It doesn't matter how deep you are into that, into that bitterness, into that hopelessness, into that prayerlessness. As we look, uh, as we look in, in, in verse 26, it says, Samson said, after now, before I read that, now that is after Samson was captured by the Philistine and he was taken to slavery. And one time they were having some sort of a party and then they, they say that bring out Samson so that he can entertain us, so that he can sing for us. Just imagine his eyes had been popped out. They had been removed. He's just there blind. He doesn't even know, but he's being told to dance for them. Oh God, that is so embarrassing. That is so shameful. For a man of, from, from a man, for, for, it was so shameful for him. And here in verse 26, it says, Samson said to the young servant who was leading by his hand, place my hands against the pillars that hold up the temple. I want to rest against it. There is good news for everyone. Everybody out there who has heart, who is going through a tough time, who feels that God can no longer work in them or through them. There's good news that God is still there and he has provided helpers for us. Even in the story of Samson, we can see that there was someone who was helping him to walk because he was blind. At the point where maybe you are blinded by your sin, by your addiction, by your everything. Everything that you have been doing, you have been blinded. But there, there is good news that there is a helper that you have been given. Just talk to someone. Just talk to someone. That is point number one. Talk to someone. 
We thank God. If you feel it is hard for you, talk to someone. Just you, we've been given leaders in our churches, in our society. We have leaders. Go and talk to someone. And most of all, we have the Holy Spirit that despite how deep you are in sin, the moment you call out to him, he will come and answer you. Just call up to him and tell him that you want to rest in the pillars, in the pillars of salvation, in the pillars of the right walking, the, the right walking with God. And also, we can see something else that Samson did. In verse 28, he prayed and he told God, O sovereign Lord, remember me again, O God. Please strengthen me just one more time. Do not underestimate a prayer the power of a prayer that has been made from a very sincere heart. Do not underestimate that. Because I'm telling you, people, that it is not the magnitude of words. It is not, uh, mostly it's, 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 the, it's not the magnitude. It is not the, oh, the, the big word that we use. But a, a prayer, a very simple prayer from a sincere heart avails much. The, the, the other thing you can do is just pray. After you've talked with someone, you need to pray and you need to continue. The Bible says that pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Like the Bible have talked about prayer so many times. And I'm telling you people, I'm a testimony that prayers do wonders. Other point is, in, verse, in, in Joshua chapter 1 verse 8 says, Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then you will prosper and succeed in all you do. There's another verse, there's another verse in the book of Proverbs that says, Oh, how sweet and perfect are, you, are your instructions. One thing for us, for your, your, your journey to healing and coming back is just getting to know what the word of God says, what the word of God says about you, what the word of God says about everything that pertains to you. And the, the, the good thing is that the Bible covers everything about us everything so if you want to heal if you want to come back after you have after you have talked to someone after you have called the name of jesus after you have repented your sins after you have confessed and believed that he died for you on the cross and then you have prayed about it you have called the holy spirit to come and help you and again now here read the word of god just read the word of God, meditate on it, and you will be able. The Bible says that you will prosper and succeed in everything. Succeed in your work, succeed in your work of salvation, succeed in everything that you desire. Uh, first Peter, first, uh, first Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says that he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Also Romans, uh, before I read Romans, that he carried all our sins. One weapon that the devil usually uses on everybody, especially if, for example, you 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 were born again and you backslided and you have been just deep into the world the moment you come one weapon that the devil uses is guilt and he will guilt you trying to show you that god cannot be able to work through you because of everything that you did and he will guilt you to, so that and he tells you that your sins are still with you but Good news is this, that the Bible says in the book of First, First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that he carried our sins. So do not allow the devil to guilt you because of the things that you have done. Because he says, the Bible says that, that the, when we come to Christ, that we are new creature, we are, we are new creatures, we are new creation, and the old has gone, the new has come. So it doesn't matter what the old has done, it doesn't matter what the old had done or said or gone to all, all the other places, but the thing is, the truth of the matter is this, that he carried our sins. The new has come. The new has come, that is the temple of the Holy Spirit. The new has come, that carries the glory of God. The new has come, that carries the goodness of the Lord. But also, you need to understand 
the previous point about the word of God, reading the word of God, getting to understand what the word of God says exactly helps you to fight back. If Jesus Christ himself was able to tell the devil that the Bible says that it is written. You also need to understand and get to know what it is written so that when he's coming to count for you all your sins, you will tell him that it is written, he personally carried my sins so that I can be dead to sin. Romans 8 Verse 1, it says, So now there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ. That is also an encouragement to us. That it doesn't matter. Hijalishi, it doesn't matter what, how deep you had gone away from the love. How deep you had, you, 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 how far you had gone away from the way. How, how much deep you had put yourself. How much you are deep into the world it doesn't matter how deep but the word of god says in romans 8 that there is no condemnation that there is, there is therefore no condemnation it doesn't matter there is no condemnation the word of god says so whenever the devil is just trying to counter is trying to put you in a position for you to feel guilt so because he knows the moment you feel guilt you won't be able to give yourself fully to the service of god you won't be able to give yourself fully into into allowing god to work with you that will be a limitation because he knows that whenever maybe the spirit speaks to you that he wants to use you in this way you will always the guilt will tell you, mm -mm, you are not able because remember you did this and this and this. But the Bible says that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And the last, the last point is this. Romans 12 verse 2. Do not be conformed to, the, to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. We need to be transformed, people. We need to be transformed. We need to be transformed. After you have done all that, I'm telling you, you will never remain the same. If you're consistent, if you're consistent in prayers, you won't be, you, you, you won't be the same. If you're consistent with the word of God, you won't be the same. You need to be transformed. And transformation here comes by you empowering your mind. And how, what do you use to empower your mind? What do you use? You need to read, read books, read the word of God, listen to, 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 to preaching about different things. Just make sure you are transformed. And the transformation comes when you empower, you, you empower your mind. You need to empower your mind. You just need to empower your mind because a mind which is, which is empowered, it's able to stand against odds it's able to stand against all these things that the devil will try to throw at you this work is all about it's not it, this work is not about perfection it's about progression so you need to allow God to work in you. Allow God to work in you when if you, when you feel it is too it is becoming too hard just call upon his name read his word and everything will be well and sooner or later, you will sing like David in the book of Psalms, chapter 30, verse 11, that you have turned my mourning into joyful dancing and taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. That you will sing after you have done everything the word of God says, that you will sing like David. That God has turned your mourning into joyful dancing and taken away my clothes of mourning and clothed me with joy. So my people, I've told you there's good news for everyone out there who has been away from the way, who has been working with God, but at some point things happened and life happened that once you call on, ask for help, just call on your help. Pray, read the word of God. Do not allow the devil to take you on, on, on guilt trips and also be transformed. Let us be transformed. And always remember, it's about progression, not perfection. The moment you reach your perfection, I'm sure that is when God will just say, welcome home, my faithful 
my good and faithful servant. Let us pray. King of glory, we worship you. We praise you and we lift up your name because you have been so wonderful. Thank you, Jehovah God, because we have known that it doesn't matter how deep we are or how far we had gone from the way, that your love is so great, that you loved us so much, that your mercy is so great, as the book of Ephesians says, that you died for our sins. We therefore pray this day, Jehovah God, that you may come and rest into our heart, that you may come, that your love will pull us back into the way, that we will be able, that we will stir up, Holy Spirit, that you are going to stir up the thirst and the desire to know you, to pray and to call upon your name, to Read your word and also fellowship with brethren, dear Lord. We worship you and we praise you. For it in Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen.